Guys, how you doing? Chris Rod, Sensitive Lawn Care. Welcome back to another lawn care video. Today we're looking at our Bermuda grass, and as you guys can see, this is how my Bermuda normally looks. It's nice, it's green, it's dark, and it's thick, but when we pan over just a little bit, we start to see this stuff right here. And if you guys have been following my channel at all, <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button because we got a lot of good content that we're gonna be producing throughout the lawn care season on how to take care of weed issues like quack grass. Guys, how you doing? My name is Chris Rod. I'm located here in El Paso, Texas. That's the westernmost city in the state of Texas. And um, if you haven't followed the channel at all, or if you guys are new and you're just tuning in, we are a, well, me personally, I'm a lawn care enthusiast. But on top of all that, we are also a veteran owned company here in, again, West Texas. And I do these DIY type style videos to teach homeowners, local homeowners. And this does apply if you guys are on the East Coast, West Coast, up North, down South, if you've got Bermuda lawns. We also talk a little bit about Northern grass types like KBG, Kentucky bluegrass, surf type called fescue, which we actually have clients that grow fescue here in the south okay um but what we are discussing today and as you guys can see we've got a weed problem which i've been making videos please refer to the previous videos if you haven't been in tune but if not no big deal uh we've got this is how my grass normally looks it's nice thick dense lush hybrid bermuda okay and then you got this clumpy looking crap which is essentially quack grass okay we've already gone ahead and identified this and it's that taller stuff that's creeping its way through our Bermuda grass. And today we're gonna solve this problem. How we're gonna solve it is the just of the video. Let's take a look a bit looker. Let's take a bigger look at the problem. <laughs> Again, my grass normally looks like that, but I did not apply any pre-emergent for a particular reason. And um, we transitioned from annual ryegrass to Bermuda every single year and what you got here is a hybrid Bermuda lawn but all this bushy tall looking stuff that is our weed problem guys and this is the first year I've never applied pre-emergent the first two weeks of February which we normally do in West Texas um, just based on our soil temperatures I did not do that because I had the idea of doing a complete lawn renovation and I and I did not put down pre-emergent because I was thinking about overseeding, excavating, pulling all this stuff out and reseeding uh, or doing an overseeding job so that I know from a homeowner perspective and a lawn care enthusiast, enthusiast perspective that I know I've got one specific cultivar of Bermuda grass. So um, that obviously went out the window. <laughs> What I was trying to teach you guys is how to transition from a newly installed sod, um, Bermuda sod that had been overseeded with ryegrass. What I was trying to do is make a series about how to transition from that ryegrass to Bermuda if you lay down sod that was overseeded with ryegrass in November, December, January, February, because I'm a business owner here in El Paso and I get calls every single April about that sort of instance where they laid sod and it dies. And so I was trying to help homeowners solve that solution by, because you can't spray new sod with any weed control until a certain point. Um, there is specific laws and regulations that dictate when you can spray herbicides on Bermuda sod or sod for that matter. And one of them clearly states that you can't spray any herbicides on it. I think it's six months after it's been laid, then you might be able to do it. Don't quote me on that, but I'll have to do some more research in regards to that. I just know if you lay new sod and you get a weed, you should not and cannot and do not want to spray herbicides. So I was trying to teach homeowners how to transition from rye to Bermuda, back to Bermuda, okay? If you overseed it in the fall time or if you have that sod laid. And in doing so, by not spraying the pre-emergent, what happened to my yard? You see this? It, it just looks, right over here is a lot of the Bermuda grass, right? And this tall, bushy looking stuff, guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. Look at this. This is all quack grass. Okay, it's not crab. Um, 
by no means is it crabgrass because if it was we would have a purple center here right down in here we'd have a purple center if it was goose grass we'd have a white center but you know we pulled the stalks out and we properly identified it as quiet grass okay <sighs> so how do we solve this problem all right so when you guys start researching how to get rid of weeds inside your lawn nine times out of ten you're gonna google right you're gonna Google how to remove weeds from your lawn, and there's gonna be a whole bunch of products that's gonna be identified that will solve your problem. That's one way to do it, right? And then there's the other way where YouTube videos like this, and the lawn care guys, we get out there and we start making this kind of content where we teach you as homeowners how to solve a problem with a weed inside of a lawn. When you properly identify a weed, that will allow you and dictate which herbicide to use. And in today's case, didn't mean to do that but in today's case um, with quack grass if you research on how to remove quack grass from your yard you're gonna come across a lot of articles that tell you there's not a herbicide a selective herbicide on the market to go ahead and do that but I'm here to tell you that there are some selective herbicides okay we've been practicing mowing it out okay that was the process I wanted to teach homeowners how to transition from rye to Bermuda and it's going to work for you. As you guys saw back here, I've got nice, dark, thick, green turf, and the Bermuda's really filling in. And on this particular side of this little patch here, the quack grass, it's there, but it's its not as abundant, and it's not spread laterally, which quack grass grows like crabgrass and spreads laterally, and it's rhizonomous, okay? So it spreads, and it will take over everything. Moreover, it's an aliopathic grass type, which means it's got a hormone in it that will kill all the other grass types, which is my main concern. But I'm here to tell you that there are two products on the market that will control quack grass. And if you read the labels, if you are applying any herbicides by any means, the label is the law. You need to read these, okay? Because it's not only gonna tell you which weed it kills and controls for you inside your yard, for example, certainty, okay? <clears throat> Control tough weeds in residential and commercial turf with certainty. Sedges, broadleaves, Kalinga, and Poa Trivialis, okay? You got a Poa issue? This is a go-to product, okay? There's a couple other market like Cantana, Katana that I recommend, and this is another one, okay? This is Celsius. Um, again, uh, these got a series of active ingredients on it. These are commercial grade. As residential homeowners, you can get your hands on some of these, okay? Annual and perennial broadleaf weeds and grasses, okay? So, for example, when I'm trying to remove a northern grass type from our southern lawns, we typically, uh, this is a go-to product right here, Celsius, okay? It does great. If I'm looking to remove turf type tall fescue, um, poa, uh, Kentucky bluegrass, or annual perennial ryegrass, this is my go-to, okay? This certainty, if you've got nut sedge, purple or yellow nut sedge, you gotta try this stuff, okay? Now, by no means am I advertising or promoting this stuff, but today we are gonna be using this. As an applicator, I do use these products in a lot of our yards. Um, each one of these range, if this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is like a $130 bottle, and you know, this sucker right here is about $120, $125 bottle. Um, you don't have to spend the money to do this, okay? This bottle will last you a very long time, okay? But I do it on a um, applicator aspect, so you know we go through the product. This tiny little bottle right here, no bigger than the, the palm of my hand, 120, 130, might even be a little bit more than that, 130 bucks. And these things come with these little scoops. Okay, so that's the products we're gonna be using today. Now let's talk application rates, okay? Certainty, okay? It comes with this little itty bitty scoop right here that you see, it's got a, what, what they call a large scoop, and then they got a small scoop, okay? And application rates, again, the label is the law, um, for, will dictate what you use depending on the weed that you're trying to control or suppress. So today we are targeting quack grass, okay? and uh, per acre is 1.25 ounces. 1.25 ounces, it's the smallest amount for an acre, but I only got a thousand square feet, okay? So read the label because it's gonna tell you how many scoops to use. And in our particular case, we're gonna be using uh, either five of the small scoops or one of the larger scoops in two gallons of water. Now here's the interesting part. 
typically when we're spraying herbicides and you can see the, the dark line there, okay, that's a gallon of, of water right now. And um, we're gonna be filling it up with two gallons, but we wanna apply uh, or pour in our herbicide first because once we add more water, it's gonna go ahead and help dilute that solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, again, it's one large scoop don't sniff it, guys, gals. <laughs> it's this herbicide. One large scoop, okay, of the Certainty product, or five small scoops. And again, this is per thousand square feet applications that we're doing. When you really get down to this stuff, we're really talking grams, okay? But um, if you don't have a scale and you're not weighing at grams, they provide these little utensils that really help you out. And here's another good example, okay, it's Celsius, okay. This particular product um, has low rates, mid rates, and high rates. And today we're going to go at the low rate in case we need to do a follow-up application. We can go at an additional low rate because there are yearly maximums that you can utilize of these products, okay. This is herbicide control. We don't want to go spraying a bunch of product everywhere and risk wash off and ending up in our waterways and things of that nature. So we got to be very careful when we're doing this kind of stuff. But we're going to go at the low rate. Um, and the low rate on this is actually 0 0.52 or 0 0.056 ounces per thousand square feet with 1.6 gallons of water, okay? Now, the measuring device that it comes with, okay, it's not a scoop as you can see, but it's actually the cap which is really nifty, okay, don't lose this. And it's got the Celsius breakdown on the ounces. And I can't get it to focus. But the lowest setting here, the very, very bottom setting, okay, not even a setting, but the mark on it, man, I wish I could get that, is 0 0.170, okay. Essentially, that very bottom line is the max is the yearly maximum okay and i'm going at the low rate today and we're going to see what kind of residual we get from this product this combination of product um with our quack grass issue but when you when you pour this in because the low that the lowest line there is 0.17 divided by two gives me my 0 0.0 what is it 1.7, 1, 0, 0.056 or 0.052, don't quote me on it, you have to read the label guys, but it is literally the smallest amount of herbicide, I wish, man, I'm horrible at camera skills guys, I swear I'm, I'm the worst at it, but I'm going to go ahead and fill it, it's halfway, okay, so we're going to go ahead and add this to our mixture, okay, half the rate so in case i need to do a follow-up which i can do in four weeks as per label and then this is the kicker okay this is my top secret <laughs> this is the go-to man this is what i'm talking about secret guys it is simply baby shampoo that's right i said baby shampoo okay what we're looking for is a surfactant the surfactant is something that we add to the tank sprayer, um, whether it be a backpack sprayer or a handheld push sprayer. It's simply a product that we use. You can use baby shampoo or you can get yourself something like this that's called Duo Stick, okay? Um, yeah, it's full, right? But um, what we're doing, one, two, what we're doing is we're adding a product that's referred to as a surfactant to help break down the water molecule into a mist. If you can think about when you wash your car and you've got these water beads just sitting on there waiting to be dried off, they're pretty bulky water beads, right? So when we add a surfactant to our solution of herbicide, we are turning that water bead into a finer molecule. A fi when it breaks down, it doesn't break down the water molecule, but it just, it, it turns it into a, a mist so that it not only is a finer water molecule particle, but it also is a, um, it, it, it sticks. That's what I'm trying to get to. It helps the, the, the herbicide stick to the plant. <laughs> and the best way I can translate that is it's called duo stick. 
So we want this herbicide to stick to the leaf tissue so that the plant or the weed um, has that herbicide stuck to it and it soaks it in nice and deep like. All right, so we got the herbicide in. We got two different herbicides. We got Certainty, we got Celsius, and we got some Duo Stick, or in your case, maybe some ba baby shampoo. And now all we're simply doing is we're agitating this product, okay? Agitating it in. All right, so not everybody's gonna have one of these backpacks. Oh. Not everybody's gonna have one of these backpack sprayers. Maybe you've got a two gallon pump sprayer, and in that case, you're not running some sort of battery that's agitating the solution for you. All you gotta do, guys, is just simply mix it up. Guys, that's it for today's video. Um, this is part of a herbicide series that I'm doing as far as weed control inside of your lawn area. I know the grass sometimes looks, it looks good, right? But don't be fooled by when you zoom in, when you get in a little closer and you dive into the, the root of the problem, you may find something that shouldn't be there. Like in my case, quack grass. And this is what happens when you don't apply pre-emergence, guys. Um, and there's a specific reason why I didn't, you know, and that's fine because what we're trying to do is teach homeowners how to transition from rye to Bermuda. And then after that, that, that period, you may have some weeds inside your property and your lawn where you may, after your sod is established, start to apply some herbicide applications. And in my scenario, again, this is just an example of what happens when you don't apply pre-emergent, but there becomes a time after that establishment of brand new sod or when you're transitioning from right of Bermuda that it is okay to apply herbicides. The important part is what I'm going to talk about now is you have to properly identify the weed, okay? Once you do that, that will dictate which herbicide to use, okay? Um, and then what you really need to do is read the label, okay? I know I say the label is the law, but it, it, it it's a little bit more than that, okay? inside these herbicide applications or inside of these labels that even if you get some of the local stuff from your big box store it will tell you it should tell you and if it doesn't hear me now that you should not apply a herbicide on the day of a mowing now as a business professional sometimes when we get to a property and we mow the grass we may treat the yard okay because we're on a weekly service basis and there's not another opportunity to spray the yard, right? Unless we show up another day, which is added cost. But outside of that, what you can do is raise the mower, okay? Raise your height of cut so that you've got more leaf tissue of the weed that you are trying to target, okay? That's important as well. So you never wanna spray on a day that you mow. I hadn't cut this yard and you guys can see it's overgrown. I haven't cut it since last Saturday. Um, I think it was last Saturday because I was going to do a video and I was like, no, let me wait because I have, I, I want to make sure I, I relay this information correctly. It tells you on the product labels to give it a day or two days. And in my case with Celsius and Certainty, 
it will literally tell you do not spray until two days prior or two days after a mowing session. So I, I backed off on the mowing because I wanted to make sure I had enough of the targeted weed lip leak tissue to go ahead and soak up that herbicide, okay? That is one of the secondary important parts, okay? After that, you definitely, once you spray, you wanna make sure that you stay off the lawn, kinda of observe it, keep any children or pets off the lawn until it dries, what we call rain proof. Typically in an hour or two hours, I always give it a buffer about four to six. So we let the dogs come out, we let them do their business, we take the dogs inside, Chris does his applications, and then everybody stays off the yard. So that's gonna conclude my video. Um, I wanted to emphasize the mowing aspect, uh, that's when to spray, the application rate. You guys saw me use my backpack sprayer. You don't have to get any of this, okay? If you can find a product that's got on the label, the package that tells you the neighbor's cleaning the pool, <laughs> that it is uh, rated for your weed that you're trying to target, go ahead and use that product, guys. You don't have to get this little $150 bottle of product by no means. But top, top trick to use is that surfactant. That's gonna be key to making that product last longer and having a better residual. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell notification so you get an update on when we do the follow-up video, which I'll do in a couple days. We're gonna kind of monitor this because we're doing this herbicide series on when to apply herbicides to your Bermuda lawns. Um, I may do one for some fescue clients of ours, but y'all have to stay tuned. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you got any comments about today, go ahead and leave them down below and I will get back to them as soon as possible. I appreciate you guys following along. And again, 90 some odd percent of you guys aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Do me a favor, man, so that I can keep making this great content for you guys and, and you know, it's helping that YouTube algorithm. But stay tuned so you can watch the transition. If you got any questions, 